Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench we have a TM504 four bay power frame. Given what happened in the last video with the TM503, we're going to take a look at this one in a lot greater detail because there was some stuff that was not quite copacetic on that other power frame. If you're interested in that, check out the previous video and we will get going. So this is a four bay power frame from Tektronix for the TM500 series. Being that it is a four bay power frame, it does have the high power compartment. So for plugins like my power supply and things like that, we can get full power out of them on that particular port. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the pass elements in this one, obviously to make sure none of those are shorted. We're gonna check it with the power supply. One of the things we are gonna do is we're gonna check the ripple on the power supply under load because the other power frame, it was not working well. It was not doing what it should have been doing. And even though my DC load didn't was too slow to catch it, there was a significant amount of ripple on the power lines. First things first is we got to take the lid off and get to the pass elements to make sure they're doing okay. To get the lid off of one of these, it is a couple of screws. I should not be using a Phillips screwdriver because tech was a fan of the uh, posit drive screws. Posit drive and Phillips are not the same. But this one at least has all its screws, even though we ordered hardware for the 503. We'll get this power cord opened up. Now, because we are starting from zero with this power frame, we definitely want to take a look at the pass elements. Which are gonna probably be on the bottom on this one. At least that's the way they look like they're gonna be. Bet you their heat sunk to the bottom, although I do have some all the way in the back. So let's get the bottom board off and see what's going on. Hmm, I request to find screws. How do I get in here? I see pass elements. Up, oh, the feet hold this one in. Got to take the feet off. Let's get a power screwdriver. All right, these are going to be pause drive 2 with an appropriate power assist. Makes this go much quicker. lid comes off pretty easy. Well, here's some of our pass elements. Here's two more. Uh, there's more than that, though. Where would they be? Rectification diodes. One, two, three, four, five. Well, if there's five, that means I'm missing three. Well, that's going to be a problem. I'm glad we opened it up before turning it on. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's going to be kind of crazy what comes out of here. What the heck is that? Well, I can't make this stuff up. Hang on a second. All right, all I did was get an office chair. Oh, come on, you, you want to come out. And you do not belong, that is for sure. There it goes. What in the world? Yeah, it's a pace. This is a desoldering nozzle. What was it doing in here? Well, we'll straighten some pins out. They got bent. Well, anybody have need a pace uh, 0342 
Tip looks to be in relatively good shape. I do not have a compatible iron for it, so if anybody wants, it's free for the cost of shipping. That that just boggles the mind. Like I I I don't know. I'm still short to pass elements, I think. Four, so there should be eight. Oh wait, nope, here's one. One, two. Three, four, five, six. That's that bay. That's that bay. Uh, yes, what I am missing is the pass elements for the high power port. And, duh, there they are. Right there. <laughs> So there are my, uh, so these are the power transistors, and that makes sense because then I have this bay is back here, uh, NPN and PNP pair. This bay's NPN and PNP pair are these these connections here. This one is these connections here. This one is those elements there. So that makes sense now. Okay. If I pull these off. If I pull one of these off, I'd almost guarantee there's a standoff on here, and these are not going to be chassis referenced. Uh, yep, there we go. And now I'm going to have to get that nut back on there. So we do have a mica insulator on. What are those? MJ2955s. Oh, maybe I, maybe I have been warned. No serviceable parts are inside. Not sure I qualify as, uh, or not sure I register as qualified personnel. But we'll run with it. And I just caused myself a pain in the butt. So the insulator, nut insulator and socket has fallen in the back. And I got to get the uh, cover back on with the screw through, with the insulator, with the washer, with the lock nut, and not short to the chassis. So I have caused myself some pain. Although, let me look. I might be able to get at. That is well screwed in. But so is that. Okay, so I might be able to take this lip off and get at that. And if we do, I may be able to test those power transistors this way. I should also note this unit was not plugged in, turned on, or anything crazy, especially with that desoldering um, tip in there. That's going to give me plenty of room. I can now work on this pass out, or uh, pass transistor, and I can get in there by exposing that. Uh, however, we are not plugged in. We are working very safe. Obviously, if you are far, if you are following along, you are doing so at your own risk. Playing around with stuff that's powered by mains voltage can be dangerous. So we have a plastic insulator that's going to have to insulate the collector side of that pass element from the chassis. So this kind of circle piece is going to go down in the hole to center this, make sure it doesn't slip out. Because if that screw contacts the chassis, there's going to be plenty of current there to do some damage. So getting this back together is going to be fun. All right, part of checking the uh, pass elements. One of the big pass elements in the back, low HFE. But no surprise there. Shipping these guys can get kind of interesting. There's a lot of iron in this power transformer. So this is a smaller screwdriver for scale. It's uh, very chunky. 
both pass elements, both power pass elements are fine. I'm going to throw this cover back on, and then uh, we'll check the smaller ones on the bottom. Okay, all the pass elements check out, and everything is good to go. So we are ready to apply power to this thing. Just make sure there's no smoke. The um, All the fuses look okay. Everything looks good. We can continuity test the fuses real quick, I guess. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea, given what we found in it. Uh, I did have a chance to speak with the owner of this power frame, and he informed me that it was not powered on. So, looks like we caught something that would have otherwise been not so good. Fuse is good, fuse is good, fuse is good, fuse is good, fuse is good. Yep, all the fuses buzz out okay. So we are good there. See what kind of passive power this thing is pulling. All right, turn on the power analyzer. And no smoke. Eight watts passive. Probably the bolt caps are, charge are charged. And good to go. So let's put the base back on it because I don't want the, when these things sit on the bench, there's no airflow on the bottom, and these are convection cooled. There's no powered cooling. So I don't want the uh, power supply to overheat while it's doing some burning testing. So I'm going to put the feet and the bottom back on to give us some airflow. Okay, this Tektronix foot design is a little interesting. It's a two-piece foot. So what ends up happening is this sits in like so. We have a piece that comes up, then we have another piece that'll screw to the chassis to hold some stuff together. I need my screwdriver bit because of the aged plastic, things like that. We're gonna put this together back we're gonna put this back together by hand, not by power. The feet are the same, but they are handed, so they will only go in correctly, i.e. straight, on one side. Okay, front feet with the tilting bail. Okay, gets our bottom back on. We are going to put the top cover back on so the lab cat doesn't uh, decide to lick the 110, but we'll get this power supply in. We will put this in the high power port and let it say hello world. Calibration not required. Desoldering tips should be removed. That's, that's still, I, I can't, that's still boggling my mind. So we do not have the 400 milliamp max because this is the high power port. So it's giving us a full one amp on the power supply, which we will ask it to deliver into the load. The thing that's going to be cool about that is I'll be able to test the ripple. Well, let's just check ripple right now. Make sure we have stable power coming out of the power supply because that happened. Output's on. Um, 90 microvolts, a ripple. Uh, 0.9 millivolts. So that's already in much better shape. We are getting 20.4 volts, which is nominal. We will ask for 0 0.9, 100 milliamps. Actually, yeah, we'll just start it there. Enter. 899, so it is delivering 900 milliamps. As we can see right there, 20.1, 900 milliamps. Everything is looking really good. So we're going to let this sit and do some burn-in testing. But through the magic of the camera, it won't take you guys any time, but it'll take me a while. 
Okay, this was the test that the last unit failed at. I have the frame loaded up with my uh, function generator plugins and the power supply. The power supply is turned on. Load is asking for 900 milliamps. And then we also have these two plugins hooked up to the scope. So I'm going to let you guys see what happens. Give me a line. All right, hit the power button. And we'll watch how these things come up. Well, that looks better. Okay, the fact that this one's moving isn't necessarily a problem because I have the sweeping plug-in hooked up up here. And to put a little bit more load on the power supply, I did put it into sweep mode. So this is actually healthy as well as that. So we have a sweep setting of 10 seconds. So what's going to happen is it's going to slowly draw out. And then it'll snap back and go in. So everything's looking good. I'm going to turn the brightness down so we don't burn the tube. But I can tell by the triggered light, as we've seen in other videos. I'm going to let this cruise. We're drawing about 50 watts out of this plug-in, or out of the power frame. So I'm going to let this run for a while, make sure we don't have any problems. But it does look like, aside from the weird desoldering tip, this power supply is actually running better than the last one. Okay, we still have nice and stable waveforms, good power draw, everything is looking great. So this power supply is going to be finished. Thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at this TM504 power supply. We had quite some surprise based on what we found in it, but this one checked out a lot better than the TM503 that we did in the previous video. If you have any questions, I am in the comments between videos. I do read every comment to the channel. If you'd like a little bit more content, check out the Patreon page. Uh, it gives me a couple of bucks to keep making videos, get more content out here. Also get content that you guys would like to see. So if there's any topics that you all would like to have covered, let me know. And uh, we'll see what we can get recorded. Patreons are running about four videos ahead right now. So everything will come to YouTube eventually. But... Patreon is running plus four. So with that, as always, more is on the way, and I will see everybody in the next video.